Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We've got a lot of ground to cover this week. So, um, like I said, go ahead and pause it if you need to. There's some new notation we're going to cover here today. Um, we're talking about arc measures and properties of chords. Okay, so here we go. Let me move this down just a little bit. Okay, and so what we want to talk about here first, you can see these two circles, is just some vocabulary words. Let me sneak my notes out here. Okay, so you can see this circle here. Okay, you can see that you have um, point A, point B, point, um, oh, that shouldn't be B, that should be point B, excuse me, um, on the circle. Then it looks like C is the center, okay? So first vocabulary word I want to give you is that angle A, C, B, okay? So A, C, B, this angle right here, is what we call a central angle. Okay, it's a central angle. Okay, and then the next thing that we need to talk about and with some notation here is arcs, okay? So this arc on the circle right here from A to B, okay? You write it like this, you write A, B, and then literally with like a little arc over it like this, okay? That's notation for arc. And in this particular case, this is what we call a minor arc, okay? Because can you see that it's just like a little sliver of the whole overall circle? Okay, a minor arc is like the smaller, okay, arc, okay? And then versus, for example, A, D, B. So can you see how that's like the bigger slice of the circle or the bigger part of the arc? So you can also use three letters to describe an arc. Because if we only used A, B, some of us would be like, okay, are you talking about AB from here to here or AB from here to here? So if you include another point, okay, you can also use three um, points to describe an arc just to make sure that everyone knows what you're talking about. And so ADB would be what we call a major arc, okay? It's like the larger one, okay? Or I'm just going to write it's the bigger one, okay? All right. And so then um, the other thing that we have here is, you can see on this little um, circle down here, okay, so if we were talking about the arc from A to G to D, right, do you see how AD, of course, is a diameter, okay? So the arc AGD, okay, that whole thing is a semicircle, okay? In other words, it's a half circle, basically, right? Because it's um, a diameter, right? Slicing the circle into halves. Okay, so let me bring us up here next. Okay, so we're looking in just this space here. Okay, so the next thing you need to know about these arcs, okay, is that the measure of a minor arc, okay, so just a little sliver, right, is the measure of the central angle, okay? And so, for example, okay, let's just take a look at this image, okay, and then all I'm going to tell you is that um, RPS, this angle right here, is 110. Okay, so if you know that, okay, and I ask you to tell me what is this arc measure from here to here arc, um, arcs are also measured in degrees. So what this is telling us is that if this central angle is 110, then the arc that it uh, forms is also that, okay? So RS has also got to be 110, okay? The next one, from R to T to S, okay? So R, T, S, let's just remember for just a second how many degrees to go all the way around a circle, right? 360. So if you know that this is 110, R, T, S, in other words, what's the rest of it? got to be 360 take away the 110. That's what RTS is, which is going to be 250 degrees. Okay, and then the last one, RST, okay, so from R to S to T, that would be this whole arc right here. Well, because RT is a diameter, okay, that must mean RST is a semicircle, and of course half of the way around a circle, right, is 180 degrees. Okay, so let's just remember from the last notes, I gave you two rules, okay? There were two rules, okay? And so for this notes, we're just gonna add on a few more, 
okay? And so here's the next one, and like I said, make sure that you pause it if you wanna just take a second and write it all down first, okay? But this one says, in the same circle or congruent circles, two minor arcs are the same, if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent, okay? So here we have this example, okay? And I'm telling you that the chord AB is nine units, and the chord BC is also nine units. Okay, so if that's the case, okay, what this is saying is um, two minor arcs are gonna be the same if their chords are the same, okay? So if this is nine and this is nine, that means that this arc from B to C and this arc from B to A have got to be the same, okay? And so therefore, if you are told um, if the measure of the arc A to B, so from here to here is 110 degrees, well then what's BC? Well, it's also got to be 110 degrees. That's what this rule tells us, okay? And then in the second example, okay, it says that AC, so from here to here, is 150 degrees, okay? And so if that's the case, what's going to be the measure of AB, okay? Well, if this is 150, okay, that must mean that the rest is 210 because 210 plus 150 would make 360. And then so 210 divided by 2, that must mean that the measure from A to B would have to be 105. Okay, so just check that out. Okay, so let's move on over here. Our next rule. Let me scoot this over, actually. Okay, so this is kind of rules four and five. I'm going to put them together because they um, kind of go together. Um, if one chord is perpendicular, um, is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, then the first chord is a diameter, and if a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and its arc. Okay, so let's look at two examples. Okay, scoot these over for a sec. Okay, let's take a look at two examples. All right, so in circle E, we want to find the length. Here's A down here, by the way, forgot to label it. want to find the length of A to C, okay? And it looks like B to D is in fact a diameter, okay? And then it looks like um, it's a perpendicular bisector um, of this chord, okay? So that means that if this is seven, this has got to be seven, okay? And then so we were asked to find what's the length from A to C, well, segment addition, right? Seven plus seven more, that means that AC has gotta be 14, okay? And so over here on example two, okay, um, let's see, so we have, again, same situation, we have a chord being bisected by a diameter, okay, that means these are the same, okay, and then it also means that their arcs are the same, okay, and since that's the case, that means you can set the 9x equal to the 80 minus x, okay, and I'll go ahead and let you solve here, but I think you're going to get that x is 8, okay, and so then we just want to figure out what the arc C, D is. Well, if we now know that X is 8, then that means C to D, that arc is 9 times 8. That means it's 72 degrees, okay? If we do 80 minus 8, that's also going to be 72 degrees for D, E, okay? And then C to D to E, so this whole thing has got to be 72 plus another 72. That would be 144 degrees. Alrighty, okay, so let me just scoot over one more, almost done. Okay, I'm going to scoot this down. Alrighty, so let's take a look at this. So this is the last rule that we want to add on to our notes today, and it says in the same circle or congruent circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. Okay, and so with that, let's move on to the we problem here. So pause it if you need to. Uh, take a look. You have circle P. Okay, you are told that PV and PW are the same. Okay, and then that QR is 2x plus 6 and ST is 3x minus 1. So we want to find what QR is. Okay, all right. So again, what this is telling us is that two chords, so QR, 
and um, ST have got to be the same if they're the same distance away from the center. And in fact, we were told that they are the same distance away from the center, okay? And so what that means is that QR and ST have got to be the same. So these we can set equal to each other, okay? So we have the 2X plus 6, that should be equal to the 3X minus 1. Okay, and if we go ahead and solve, okay, I think we will get, um, let's see, I'm going to move the X over, subtract. I think we're going to get that X is 7, and then what were we trying to find? We were trying to find QR, okay? So 2 times 7, and then plus 6, I think that means that QR is 20, okay? All right, so last problem. Pause it if you need to, okay? And when you're done, as you know, I don't work these ones out, but I will tell you that the answer you should be getting here is six. Okay, so get to your classwork, guys and ladies. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Keep it up.